What's up, everybody, and welcome to another Legion Live, coming at you live on Facebook. I've got Barbara over here all the way from Phoenix. Um, I'm down in Alabama. I'm in the uh, the studio here on the 89th floor of the Jordan Plaza Tower, a.k.a. the spare bedroom home office of my suburban uh, community home. Um, so, <laughs> so here we are. <clears throat> and uh, today, uh, we've been kind of talking about this a while, the content that we're going to get into and share with you. And uh, a lot of it goes back to what I have been kind of on my soapbox about lately, which is taking action, right? And, you know, I, I've kind of flipped some of my mindset from, hey, people like quit being lazy, like quit being, you know, counterproductive, you're going to do it to like, hey, I understand that people in this industry, in the e-commerce industry, which has a, a just amazing opportunity right now, want to progress, want to take the next step forward, want to get better at, their do, at what they're doing. They want to leave their nine to five job or they want to scale up their side hustle. They want to make more money. They want to have more fun. They want to have more success. I get it. But there's like little stumbling blocks, right? So there's just like, you're not hitting on all eight cylinders, right? There's just something that's missing. And what we're doing right now, we're in this really big push with the Legion with Hickory Flats to give you little tools to help tweak that engine just a tiny bit and uh, and come up with little practical solutions to solve problems that you haven't been able to come yet or to give you little practical ideas to make another step forward in some sort of advancement of your business, right? So that's what we've got Barbara here tonight. And she is the diva of bundles, she says, right? I call her like the magic um, wizardess of all things bundle related, right? Because a um, lot of things, just not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So there's a lot of people in this industry that do a lot of things. And I'm one of those guys, like there's a lot of things that we do. When I was initially in wholesale, um, selling a lot of wholesale products, I figured out like this magical ability to bundle things. And I started out by bundling just multi-packs and six packs and case quantities. And I was setting up variation listings, but then we started um, bundling different things. And I didn't even know what I was doing, setting those listings that were poorly optimized. But what it did is it allowed me to take my first step into private label. And I didn't even know it was private label at the time. I had no clue that's what it was called. That's I had no clue that's what we were identifying it as. I didn't know what that's what it was, but it was. It was my first step into private label. And looking across like the whole spectrum of e-commerce right now, everybody knows that we need to have our own brands, our own listings, right? You may be making a ton of money doing retail arbitrage and that's amazing. Keep doing it. That's awesome. But use some of that momentum to start spawning off something that you can actually start to control, eventually build into a brand, eventually build into a business that you're not relying on one platform. All right. Again, getting on my soapbox, guys. I know you've heard me say this a lot lately, but it's so true. I'm so passionate about it. And, and right now is a time to be taking uh, every advantage of all the opportunities you have to do that. So tonight, um, I told you there's a lot of things that I'm, I'm I'm pretty good at, but I'm not a specialist at. And Barbara Draska is a specialist at bundling. And that's probably not a word she might even use for herself, or I've never heard it, but I'm laying that crown on her head. If I could somehow like go across the screen and lay that specialist crown on your head, you've got it. <clears throat> so Barbara, if you would give us, um, everybody that's listening, give them a really quick, like two minute introduction of how you got started in e-commerce. Well, gosh, uh, I, I look good for my age. I'm just saying before I, before I go on to what year I started in e-commerce, 1996, I was seven years old. No, I'm kidding. 1996 was uh, my first foray into physical products. And actually you don't know this story, Tim. Uh, it was an, I was an accidental private label seller. So, wow, in 96. I didn't know that it was called that, you know, until recently. But uh, what I did was um, emojis, you know, all the emojis we use now that are really sophisticated. Yep. Well, back in 96, there were like a dozen, a smiley face, a sad face, a kissy face and a hug. Right. And they were all made with your keyboard. They weren't yep. visual. So what I did was I, uh, I put 12, I put them in a grid. I think it was 16 of them, a grid by four by four. And I put them on a mouse pad. I got from, I think, uh, cafe press and a coffee mug and a t-shirt. And it was also my four in a bundling. Cause I put those three together in a bundle. And I think all the t-shirts were large and I sold them on eBay. Nice. I know it didn't, I didn't, <clears throat> do. uh, I didn't start. I started on Amazon back in 2015, but I've been in e-commerce for a while. I'm a, I'm a granddaddy, grandmama <laughs> in the e field of e-commerce. 
The matriarch of e-commerce. Got Ooh, it. I love that matriarch. I, like yeah, that. I told you I'd come up with like some sort of good word today. Um, <laughs> it it might even be a little bit weird, but hopefully it's accurate. So yeah, um, weird. I was in China with you. Remember? I know we we spent a lot of hours together. So um, essentially, um, what you've done is a lot of different e-commerce models, right? You've, you've dabbled in a lot of different things and what you've landed on is bundling. And I understand why you land on bundling is because it's fairly easy to identify opportunities. You can actually attach, attack like these fanatical niche markets of products. And you don't have to go through like some of the more aggressive steps that people associate with private label. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk about you personally for a minute, right? Um, I'm going to tell a story about you after I get that out of my throat. Sorry. <laughs> Have so, I you telling a story. <laughs> so, um, so Barbara came to China with us uh, not long ago, and Barbara is is one of those people that you know understands like the principle of importing stuff, and it doesn't have to be from China; it can be from anywhere. But like this more advanced private label, and what you know, what I came to recognize about Barbara was that she was like very many of you listening. Like 95% of the way there, there's just a couple things, right? So what Barbara did is when she she wasn't 100% familiar with maybe how to develop a brand new product and import it and all this domestically, instead of just sitting around and saying, oh, I can't do it, but I'd love to, I'd love to, I'd love to. Like so many people that I see constantly, I go to big e-commerce conferences where there's people that have been going to the conference for five years and never open up an Amazon account. They're not there. So what Barbara did is she said, okay, I know eventually like I want to have this complexity of a brand and and all this but instead of not you know not doing anything like i'm going to start a little bit more basic and a little bit easier and a little bit less barrier to entry right and that's how she came up with her bundling techniques because she started you know uh sourcing products domestically right yep. here in the u.s yep. and what she was doing was she was already taking items that were generating traffic themselves bundling them together and it made it a lot easier and what that's done is it's made her a type of private label expert, right? If she's an expert at bundling, that is private label. So I say all that to say this. Um, a lot of people watch webinars and they watch YouTube videos and they watch, you know, all this content and information. And sometimes we have the risk of like looking like we know it all and acting like we know it all. And it's a little intimidating. I remember when I first started e-commerce watching guys on webinars, I'm like, holy crap, I'll never learn all this stuff. Right. But we've all been there. Like Barbara's been there. I've been there. And like, all we've done is we figured out how to adapt. So what we're trying to do is give you content and easy solutions so that you can begin to adapt. And instead of just jumping off the cliff in something real advanced and complicated, like something that's a little easier and to take baby steps and then realize, hey, what I thought was advanced and complicated, it's not. But it's a starting point, right? It's all in the path of or in the journey of private label, the journey of e-commerce. There's different insertion points. There's different starting points. And this is one of them. So now that I've hyped up bundling and I've explained why I think it's so important to be uh, sharing this content, um, what I've asked Barbara to do is to share just some of her experience and tips on how to even get started. So like if you're not even aware of bundling, that's who we're speaking to. We're speaking to people that are going, what the heck is bundling or how do I do this? Like Barbara, if you would share with us just a few ideas. I know you can't dive deep into that, and we're going to talk about a way that they can access more of your free information here shortly, but we want to kind of keep this um, introductory and short. Um, can you give some just examples and explanations of easy ways to identify bundle opportunities and then execute those opportunities? Absolutely. I've been making notes. I wasn't being rude by looking down. but No, I knew I'm you were making notes. I was, notes. Talking, I was talking a lot. It's hard to keep up with me. I kind of ramble. That's okay. I'm used to that. <laughs> All right, go for it. But it would love. So uh, some people will call bundling poor man's private label. I don't actually like that terminology, but I say that it's a, a, a very low risk way to test out a fanatical niche market. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is, you know, we talk about how I started ages ago and Tim's been doing a lot of different things, but start from where you're at. Right. Don't compare yourself to others. Like Tim said, start from where you're at and just work from there. And if you just do little one percent increments in whatever projects you're working on, just do one percent further each day. Eventually, you're going to be at the end of whatever that project is. So to keep from being overwhelmed, uh, just how do you eat an elephant? One little bite at a time. Um, so, so, so. OK, so my approach to bundling is pretty similar to the way people who are doing private label the right way are doing it. And that is I can 
conceptualize it down to one thing, customer centric approach. So a lot of folks, and this used to be private label where you could just go, you know, find a spatula and make a couple of different colors and throw it up on Amazon and you'd be good, right? You'd be golden, but times have changed. And uh, I think business has not changed. And business in general is if you're serving a customer based on their needs and their desires and their wants, and you're solving their problems and you're bringing products after you've identified their problems and identified their passions and then create products or and a bundle, by the way, as a product, bring those products to them after you identify what's important to them. I think that increases your chance significantly of being successful. Yeah. Amen. And you just hit on something that um, I was actually doing a podcast recording with um, Bradley Sutton of Helium 10 today. And what we talked about was not getting confused by the hype and the, the, the shiny object engine and just making sure that in addition to all the cool stuff we're doing, we're sticking to basic business principles. Like life is not about a hack. Life is not about some ninja technique to outrank your opponent. Like we had, like those are cool. And, and sometimes we, you know, use some of those opportunities, but we also have to just stick with basic, very basic business, you know, fundamentals. And like you said, is producing a good product that people actually want. And the context we put that in today is like, no matter how great you make your listing and like how keyword you stuff, you know, how, how, how heavy you stuff the keywords, like if it's not a product, someone's going to buy, it doesn't matter. So what you're talking about is very much in line with what I, you know, just today was talking about is like, you have to identify what people want and then create a unique offer for them. And that's what bundling does essentially. So I know that there's at least one person who's watching this who's saying to themselves, or maybe out loud to the screen to both of us, well, how do I know what they want? So uh, I, I tell people to look at two things, passions and problems. So a great way, real simple, no cost whatsoever. I don't encourage you to watch TV, but in this case for market research, watch late night TV and look at the infomercials. They have done some crazy market research on a need that needs to be filled, a problem that needs to be solved or a passion that needs to be fed. Mostly it's a problem that needs to be solved and come up with these really kooky, cool things and sell the heck out of them. Yes. I'm going to interject with a five second comment. Did you guys hear what she just said? They have spent the money. They have spent mountains of money on the research. Watch those infomercials and you can get for free the information they paid potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars for. Okay, keep going. So every feature, every benefit that they name on those infomercials, you're going to jot those down because they've surveyed their audience to find out. They've asked the question, what are you most afraid of about X, Y, Z? You know, having mobility when you're older, for example, or having, you know, a skin condition. What, what do you fear the most? And they've made a list of all those things and developed a product based on the concerns that tar their target market has told them. So that's just one idea. You can also go into a bookstore. Just go to the magazine section and just start looking at all these niche magazines. But don't just look at the niche magazines. Open them up and look at the advertisements because the companies that are advertising their products inside of these magazines, they're paying some good money to advertise in those magazines. They've already done the market research. They've already found out that there's a niche, there's a problem to be solved, and they've created a product to pro solve that problem in that niche. And yes. there are hundreds of ways to go find niches. These are just two Really fast, easy, free ways to do it. Okay, so once you found a niche, right? Um, how do you identify products that make sense to bundle? Right, so I don't look at it from a product perspective. I ask, um, what is important to, what, what problem is this person trying to solve? And what products have they been using to solve that problem? And I do market research using like Helium 10 on Amazon to find out what products are being served up to that keyword um, search um, or long tail keyword search. And then here's what some people will tell you. Just go find a product and look down at people who bought this also bought. That is absolutely not my perspective. First of all, that's not accurate. Because I bought a product and then looked at my own account where it told pe people that I also bought this, this, and this, and I had no interest in the other products. They weren't even related to what I was buying. You want to look at why did they buy this? What problem is it solving? And what else would help them solve their problem even better? 
What else can I add to this product, to this bundle, to create more convenience and to give them a wow experience? So when they open that box from Amazon, they're not just saying, oh, okay, there's my product. They open it up and because you've done the packaging right, you've put a competitive, um, you've put inserts in there that keep the competition off of it and you've wowed them with the type of product and how it's presented. You also increase, by the way, your ability to get great reviews and feedback uh, uh, feedback on your account and product reviews when you give them the experience that Amazon wants them to have. You wow them with your bundle. Yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> excuse me, coughing up some dinner here. Um, <laughs> once you have identified that, like the next problem is you've got to source that. Okay. And the idea of sourcing like is daunting. Like so many people are intimidated by the idea of sourcing. So let's not call it sourcing. Let's just call it shopping. All right. Let's, let's just go out and get it right. Um, fortunately, there's like this, this very convenient correlation between the types of items that you're identifying, like that have a niche, um, need, you know, a niche following or a, or a need to, you know, um, fix something or solve a problem and those items being locally available or easily available, right? Because again, with a bundle, you don't have to have a unique product. You just have to have a unique offering. So right. once you identify something, yeah, yeah, what's your solution for sourcing and, and finding a supplier for these items? So there's not only one solution or supplier. Um, I like to test out bundle concepts by going small first so, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit risk adverse in the beginning when I'm trying a project. I do a ton of testing and then I'll go big after I validated it. So, so I bought this lovely little house about six months ago and lucky me, it backs up to a strip mall and my kitchen window looks in the back door of the Dollar Tree. <laughs> I see their new trucks and new products come in every day. I can just walk right over there, take my coffee and just go look. And get product ideas. I can even buy product there, put together a test bundle. In fact, uh, if we could have shared my screen, I would have put up um, this week I went over there and they have uh, brand new party supplies, but with unicorns on them. And unicorns, yep. uh, you'll hear me talk about unicorns a yeah, lot. Yeah, they're hot right now. Uh, they're always going to be hot. What little girl has never loved a unicorn? Come on. And now it's uh, supported by all these cartoons and all sorts of other stuff. I actually, um, a little bit of a... Uh, raw share here. I had a six foot unicorn Pegasus shoved up into my tree as a Christmas decoration. I remember seeing that and thinking that woman loves her unicorns. Well, after Christmas, I went out. Okay. You asked about how I source products after Christmas. I waited till everything was on sale. I went out and I bought seven more. I now have a herd of unicorns. So wait until you see Christmas next year. Is it a herd or is it a gaggle? I can't remember I with unicorns what it is. The flying kind and not all of them fly. So I don't know. We'll have to, I'll ask the seven-year-old across the street. She seemed to know much more about no, unicorns and alicorns like, than I did. My mind is blown because I thought all unicorns flew. Like we're just no, going to have to have a whole separate legion live about this because I had no idea that unicorns don't fly. Pegasus. Pegasus right. fly. So, so anyway, so I went over to the Dollar Tree uh, to take a break and get some product ideas. And there they are. Every single party supply with all these really cute unicorns. Now, the, the caveat is everybody else can buy that exact bundle, yeah. right? That uh, Put that together by going to a Dollar Tree. So you go to Dollar Tree to get ideas and you can test that bundle, but make sure you're maybe doing something creative with the packaging that's got, or you put, um, you source wholesale, a little, you know, a unicorn tiara or something, right? And then what I do is let's say that bundle hits. I know I understand that a party bundle with a unicorn, pink unicorn themed works really well. Now I will go directly to the sources who sell to the dollar stores and I'll source that stuff wholesale. Instead of paying a dollar, I'll pay 35, 45 cents each for it, for each piece. But yeah, I can check it out just a, do, a couple of dozen from the dollar, a dollar store. Exactly. And we talk about that all the time, like go wide, but not deep. Um, yeah. And yeah, you you may create your initial private label bundle listing from something that anybody can replicate. But the truth is nobody's going to see it anyways. Cause if you only send in 30 items and you sell them out fast, you're not on anybody's radar, yeah. but you've got the data, but now you can make a decision. Yeah. Like I'm going to go big and you can get custom printed stuff that nobody else yeah. can get. You can go to a supplier buy 20,000 paper plates and a thousand unicorn tiaras with a relatively high degree of certainty. If you do your validation and testing correctly, that it will sell. Cause if you sold, you know, this many, this easy, and it's kind of a basic package and don't get worried about the branding. Don't worry about an amazing brand name for that listing. Don't worry about amazing user experience yeah. and insert cards. You're just testing. You can do that later. But 
by bundling those items, you didn't have to create anything. You didn't have to invent anything. You didn't have to do any of that stuff, right? I can make that happen in 15 minutes. Yep. So if like Dollar Tree is the easiest, which is also, like you said, the riskiest because it is, you know, less barriers to entry. People can copy you. Yep. What are some of the other places in that you find products that you can source to make bundles? And I, I have a list in my head right now too, but I want to, I want to hear you kind of go through um, those places. So sale auctions. I love auctions. I find products at auctions. I didn't know existed. Um, a liquidation. Now explain that. I don't know what a wholesale auction is. Help me out. Is it a liquidation no, no, auction? No, sorry, there's, there's two, wholesale, comma, auctions, comma. I was making a little list. I'm sorry. So you can buy a straight wholesale. Um, you can buy liquidation lots, right? Yep. So uh, a company is liquidating. I had these zombie mugs. I had about 950 zombie mugs, his and her zombie mug sets. And we, I had white labeled coffee made uh, where I basically just bought um, coffee from a manufacturer and they put my label on it. And we named it zombie coffee. Right. And we put a crossword zombie crossword puzzle and a zombie pen in there. Right. That was a liquidation item. Now, granted, after those are gone, then I can't source those zombie mugs again, but uh, liquidation. But I bet I can go to China and get the manufactured. Right. Also, yeah. auctions. Uh, I love auctions because I find stuff that I didn't know existed. So just Google auctions and whatever your uh, auction house in your local city to, to get auction ideas. Yeah. And then, um, of course, you're going to be with us in a week and a half, right? In Vegas. Aren't you coming to ASD? I am coming to ASD. Yeah. I yeah. saw that you're doing some stuff there, doing some training. So ASD is like one of those places that you can see. I mean, how many individual products are you going to see at ASD? A few hundred thousand, right? Ooh, products? Gee, I, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's uh, there's ASD, there's America's Mart in Atlanta. There's the big uh, like retail expo thing that's in Dallas. Like they're all over the place. So you can go to like trade shows. You can go to industry specific trade shows like your hunting and fishing expos that are at your local county fair. Like there's all sorts of stuff. So um, so anything from the Dollar Tree, right, which is the easiest, but a little more risky. Yeah, home shows, even though it's not a retail. Home shows, or a home yeah. Show. No, no, home show. Go to last year. I went to um, what was it? I think it was like a, oh, it was a tattoo fest was being, I don't have tattoos. Do I look like a girl? I don't have tattoos, right? It's not even my thing, right? So, but there was this tattoo, like little local trade, not trade show, um, where people went who liked tattoos. So I went so I could understand the market and look at the people and see what they were looking at and what booze they were going to. But then right next door, another completely niche market in the building next door, a reptile show again. Don't have reptiles, but I went over to that one too. I paid 10 bucks, got in, right? I got quite the education just from a Saturday of going to these little local fairs on specific niche markets. And then I'm sure that at those niche markets, you were able to not only identify ideas, but probably suppliers too that would love right. to sell you mountains of stuff for you to bundle and create unique listings and help move their product. So that Absolutely. is, and they were, there were, I was the only, now I hate, I like what you said. I don't identify as an Amazon seller. I heard you say that on a, a podcast yesterday. Uh, I agree. I don't identify as an Amazon seller, but if I were, I would say I was the only Amazon seller in those two buildings. These yeah. manufacturers did not even sell on Amazon. It wasn't even, a, they have little, you know, they have little shops and they, they don't sell on Amazon. So it was like shooting. <laughs> I was about to say shooting like, fish in a barrel, but it was like shooting lizards in a barrel, I right? Not to go there, but we're thinking the same that. thing. We got that. We're good. Um, well, that's awesome. So um, I know that you know these these lives. We need to keep short, but but here's the deal. Um, all of you that are listening, just keep this in mind. There are fairly easy and low risk entry points into private label and bundling is definitely one of them. All right. When I say easy, anybody can do it. Um, there's enough free resources out there, YouTube videos, um, watch our, our private label Legion YouTube channel. There's all sorts of videos just like to help you uh, figure out how to optimize your listing or set your stuff up. Right. Um, there's enough easy opportunities that you don't have any excuse not to at least dabble in this and try it and get your feet wet. And yeah, you're going to have some failed experiments, but you're going to learn. So they're not really failures, right? But you got to get your feet wet. You got to dip your toes in the water. You got to start somewhere. And bundling is one of the places that I got. Started. My first private label listings were bundles, right? Oh, cool. um, it's it's a, it's an incredible opportunity. So get out there and do it. You don't have an excuse. Now, I will say this. Um, Barbara, because she has a good relationship with us and she loves our listeners and she loves her listeners. She literally today, today, like a few hours ago, set up 
um, this very unique offer for you guys to free training, um, free training right? She knew that she couldn't talk about it here. So you set up, you set up like a 60 minute video, right? Like an hour long training video. An hour long training of a, the, my six step approach to creating profitable bundles to sell on Amazon. So an entire hour long video of how she creates her videos or how she creates her bundles. Oh. She created a video for that and it's absolutely free. So right now I'm going to um, post the link here in just a second underneath here to go to that and um, click that link. It costs you nothing. You're just going to watch this 60 minute video that she has. It's free training because she knew she couldn't do it here. Take advantage of that, guys. You can't like undervalue education, especially when it's free. Like you really, really can't undervalue free education. So take a little time and watch this. If you guys are watching the replay on YouTube, it is in the comments below. Click that link. Barbara set that page up just for us and she's yep. going to leave it there. She's going to leave it there indefinitely. So that YouTube video, if you're watching it, the link is right below. Click that link. It's 60 minutes of training, right? Free stuff for you guys that Barbara's hooking us up with. Um, we're super glad to have her, you know, as one of our, um, I don't even know what you call it. Like one of our community friends or like, I don't know how you define our relationship, but people that we collaborate with. I was, I was one of the leaders uh, on the September Iwu trip. Yep, I, so I she came to China with this. And, and, yep. Yeah, I taught and, your group only. And I've done some webinars for her. So like yep. we just share content. So we, I guess you can call us industry collaborators. Is that a good, yeah. is that a good title? Yeah, that's I'll a good title. Forward. Yeah. Forward. So um, anyways, because we have that going on, um, we're hooking you guys up with that free training. Barbara's, well, just Barbara, not really me. It's hooking you with that free training. Take advantage of that. So Barbara, um, uh, I feel like we should end this like on something profound. Do you have anything real profound to say to the listeners? Like give us some, give us some like, fire like get us fired up right now take care of your teeth and they'll take care of you <laughs> take care of your teeth that is the most yeah. profound thing ever. Now all right. go I'm, gonna you, I'm gonna leave you all with an assignment right do okay, do one thing to move towards whatever's on your whiteboard your goal sheet whatever just one little thing before you go to bed tonight or right after you wake up in the morning tomorrow, do one thing. Promise me, just do one thing towards your goals, and that creates momentum. How's that? It and does. Take care of your teeth. Get that f and brush your teeth. Yep. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Barbara. Um, I'll have that link down in just a second for that free training. Thank you all for watching. Thank you guys for everything that you do for us. Um, if you're not a subscriber to our YouTube channel, go over to Private Label Legion or Tim Jordan. Search one of those two on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. You get notified uh, when this video goes on YouTube. But anything else, we're launching several videos a week. Check out our podcast, Legion Radio, right? It's on Stitcher. It's on iTunes. It's on Google Play. It's on everything. Um, go to PrivateLabelLegion.com. You can check it out there. Um, go to Facebook and join our group, Private Label Legion. Like our Private Label Legion page and tons of content there for you guys. Get involved with the community. Um, we've got all sorts of stuff going on. And Barbara is going to be coming on one of the coaching sessions here um, pretty soon. I don't think we've picked a date. I don't even know if I've uh, I've hammered you down for a date yet. But one of the coaching yep. sessions on our One Degree Mastermind, which is where we do group coaching and um, and do some like deep dive training. Uh, you have to be a member of that. Uh, so it's not actually... Uh, for everybody, but those of you that are members understand that Barbara is going to be coming on there. And those that uh, of you that want that kind of training, check out that offering. You can go to one degree mastermind.com or just go to the website Hickory Flats, click the top uh, banner. There's a button that says training coaching and it drops you down to all the information for the one degree mastermind program. So thank you, Barbara, for being on. Guys, brush your teeth and do one thing on your to do list tonight or first thing in the morning to get that flywheel spinning, get you a little velocity. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next Legion Live. Thanks, Barbara. Bye. Bye.